really quick sound check. Could you do that for me, please? Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to go ahead and welcome you to our Tuesday night webinar series. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> My system decided to uh, res re flash itself here. Okay, thank you. Again, I uh, want to welcome everybody to our Tuesday night webinar series. My name is Dave Aquino, and I'm the Options Live Trading Room Specialist here at MicroQuant. And uh, tonight's webinar is focused on trading SPY spiders with options using MQ regression and value bars. Uh, basically tonight I'm going to cover some of the fundamental aspects of the S&P 500 index ETF also known as SPY that's its symbol and uh, shorthand they're called the spiders and we'll also be talking about the weekly options on that ETF. Then I'm going to talk about a great trend following strategy that can, you can use to trade the spiders on, on several different time frames. I'm going to show you an intraday version of it, but it can be expanded to uh, you know uh, longer time periods if you'd like. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to carry out that strategy using MQ regression and value bars. Okay. Uh, if you can, if you think of any questions during my presentation, please go ahead and submit them via the GoToWebinar side menu. I'll try to answer questions as they come in, and if they're related to the current topic, or I will answer all other types of submitted questions in the question and answer segment at the end of the presentation. But before we leave tonight, I'll make sure that all questions are addressed. Now, risk disclaimer. We at MicroQuant want you to know that trading or investing carries a high level of risk and is not suitable for all persons. Before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. This content is subject to change at any time without notice and is provided for the sole purpose of education and assistance in making independent investment decisions. ValueCharts.com has taken reasonable measures to ensure the accuracy of the information contained herein. However, ValueCharts does not, not guarantee its accuracy and is not liable for any loss or damage which may result directly or indirectly from such content or from an inability to access such information or in any delay in or failure of the transmission or the receipt of any instruction or notification in connection herewith. Any past performance results are shown for illustration and example only, are hypothetical, and as such have many inherent limitations. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those shown. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. CFTC Rule 4.41. This is our U.S. government required disclaimer. The CFTC wants you to know that trading, that futures and options trading not only has large rewards but also large potential risks. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the futures and options market. Do not trade with money you cannot afford to lose. This is neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy, sell securities, stocks, or options on the same. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed on this website. Past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. If you have any questions on either of these two disclaimers, feel free to go ahead and contact us at MicroCorn. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, before we can start talking about indicators and setups, I'd first like to, to get back down to basics. I'd like to touch on what we believe are the three most important components of technical analysis. The first is price, second is value, and the third, momentum. Okay, By combining all three components together, we believe it provides the most complete view of the current makeup of a market. Now the tools we're going to use to gauge these three components will be for price, 
we're going to use the traditional price charts everybody's familiar with the open high low close bar charts for value we're going to utilize our value charts system and by extension value bars and I'll go into an explanation of, of value in a moment the next will be momentum and we'll use MQ momentum to focus on that and then the, the fourth component that I'm going to bring into the, the discussion tonight is trend direction and we're going to utilize MQ regression for that now just to make sure that everybody's starting out on the same level you want to get a basic understanding of what value is it's different from what the uh, the industry has always said what value is value this is a, a value mutual fund that is something that's subjective to some analysts opinion as to a stock or a mutual fund whether whether these prices are under or overvalued that's subjective it's it's based on uh, a, a persons or a group of persons belief of what they know of the numbers on a, on a particular stock when we're talking about value here with microquant we're talking about an objective evaluation of the current price based on real past prices within an analysis period through value charts prices are placed within five primary valuation zones now the first zone is this green zone here in the center this represents fair value the next two zones are these yellow zones above and below fair value and this represents moderately overvalued levels and the bottom yellow zone is the moderately undervalued, uh, moderately undervalued zone. <clears throat> then above and below those two yellow zones, we have the red extreme zones, which represents significantly overvalued and significantly undervalued levels. Now, historically, prices are within fair value roughly 66% of the time. Now, above and below those levels in the yellow zones, prices spend about 16% of the time in moderately overvalued and 16% of the time in moderately undervalued levels. Now, above and below that, we have this, the red extreme value zones, and prices are within those zones roughly 1% to 2.5% of the time combined. Now these percentages can vary slightly depending on the markets you trade and the indicator settings that you use but as you can see most of the time prices stay within fair value and just occasionally enter moderately and significantly under and overvalued levels. Okay so well, first thing I'd like to do again is show you these uh, our, our price gauge and for that we're going to use the traditional open high low close bar chart as you can see these charts have been used for over 100 years and they are a good representation of price okay price over time okay each price bar represents each bar represents price movement within a specific time period or for a specific number of transactions like this bar here this is the open side and this is the closed line and this is the high uh, price of the bar and this is the low price of the bar and we connect it with this bar here and this represents the body of the bar and again these each bar represents all the prices traded within a specific time period or for a specific number of transactions now the one thing that we can do to our open high low close bar chart is apply the value concept directly onto the bars and that's how we developed our value bars indicator now you can see that within value bars you see you can see both price and value on the same chart now the prices themselves are still represented in the traditional open high low close format you can see this like on this bar here this is where the opening price is this is the closing price here and there's the high low and there's the body of the bar right there okay but on top of that 
you can see that the bars themselves are color coded so you can see where each price lies within the five valuation zones. You can see these bars here are in green fair value. If we go down here, we have the lower yellow bar segments. These bars are in the moderately undervalued level. And this red bar segment here, prices are in the significantly undervalued level. Now going up, these upper yellow bar segments represent moderately overvalued prices. And these red bar segments here represent significantly overvalued um, levels. And you can see by combining the two, both price and value, in one view, it greatly aids both identifying price and value very quickly. Okay, now for NQ regression, it's, it's a very simple idea. It's basically that NQ regression is designed to serve as a basic trend filter. If NQ regression is green, then the market is bullish and it's okay to go long. If MQ regression is red, the market is bearish and it's okay to go short. As a trend filter, MQ regression helps you boost the probability of, of a, having a successful trade by keeping you on the trending side of the market, the correct side. I'm gonna show you right here. This is, a, this is the open high, low, close bar charts represented at plus with value bars. Now this line here, this is MQ regression. And again, uh, MQ regression, when it is red, the trend is bearish, the trend is down, so it's okay to go short. Uh, when the prices move and change direction, MQ regression turns green. The, uh, the, the market is now bullish and it's okay to go long. I see there's a question here. MQ, okay, MQ regression is not a moving average or a trend line. All it does, it serves to be a, 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 a direct indicator of trend. Is it bearish or is it bullish? Just look at the color, okay? There is one aspect of MQ regression, I'll bring it up later, that, that can give some signal and it tends to be, the, it is the slope of MQ regression. And as you can see, when it, it, when it goes from red to green or green to red, it tends to go flat and then change slope. Here slope is negative, here slope is positive. And usually it's the case that uh, when MQ regression starts to go flat, there's a, uh, a chance it can switch from one to the other. But I'll show you that later on other charts, okay? Now just for the settings of the indicators that we're gonna use, value bars is what we're gonna primarily use. It's a five bar analysis period. For MQ regression, we're gonna use a 100 bar analysis period. For those of you that are familiar with the indicators, I just wanted to go ahead and, and put it out there that uh, uh, what, what the exact settings I'm gonna be using at. Just let me double check one quick question here. The fair value in daily time frame, may, will it be different from uh, or the same as an hourly time frame? Each time frame will have its uh, own fair value uh, calculation. You're talking about the, the basic, the five primary valuation zones. Yes, they're going to be different because each bar is representing a different number of uh, prices. So that will be... Uh, the calculation will be different there because it it's based on looking back a specific number of um, of of time periods and comparing the current price to those past historical prices. And by changing the time frame, you're going to change that calculation. Okay. All right. The next uh, topic that I just want to touch on, so because this is the this is the trading vehicle that we're going to be using. Uh, the S&P 500 index ETF or exchange traded fund. It's like a mutual fund, an index fund, but instead of being uh, owned by a company like Vanguard, it's actually uh, created to be traded as its own entity on the open market. So its uh, trading symbol is SPY. 
we'll go into some more details here. Some interesting facts about the S&P 500 index itself. It's comprised of the 500 largest companies in the United States. The uh, makeup of the S&P 500 index represents 80% of the U.S. stock market capitalization by value. So if you added up the value of the entire U.S. stock market, 80% of it would be the 500 largest companies or the S&P 500. It is a highly diversified group of companies. They are blue chip stocks. Now, that is the index. The ETF is traded uh, based on the uh, uh, makeup of the 500 largest companies. And on the ETF, they offer weekly options on the spiders. And these options are very liquid weekly options. They're some of the most highly, um, highest traded options out there. Now, one characteristic of the SPY options is that they have very tight 50 cent strike prices available. So right now, um, the average price is about $161 for uh, the uh, ETF. So you'd have 161, 161 and a half, 162, 162 and a half. So the strike prices are very, uh, you can very finely tune what strike prices you'd like to get in on. So they're very liquid. Okay, now that you know a lot more about the S&P 500, 500 ETF, why should we bother with options? Why can't we just buy and sell the ETF? Now, I know everybody in this room that attends my uh, options like trading room, they're gasping and like, what, what do you mean trade without options? It, it's just the, the I, I want to share with you some of the, the, um, the important factors that make trading spliders with options um, a, a, lot more flex, a lot more flexibility to the trader. Uh, basically, options are nothing more than trading vehicles that derive their value from characteristics of an underlying stock or ETF, in this case, SPY. Now, why do I use them to trade the, the spiders? Well, first of all, and probably the biggest reason is leverage. Right now, the price of the ETF is about $161. For a Delta 70 call, uh, we're trading it, those are trading at $3.06. And that's for the call that goes out 10 days. It's not even the weekly of this week, 10 days, okay? $3.60. There is defined risk. You know exactly what you're putting into the market. You know, you buy one, one call, you're spending $306. And also, it's very highly liquid. It's very easy to get in and out. These are primarily what is used to trade the... Uh, uh, options are primarily used to trade the spiders. Now the things to watch out for if you are buying options, watch out for time decay. If you're going to hold them very long term, like over a week, and then you have to be careful of commissions. Um, whereas, you know, you might buy one, or, you know, 100 shares of SPY at $161. You might come out and buy 20 contracts of, the, uh, of calls and uh, that can generate some commissions, so you want to be careful of that. But if you trade well, usually these commissions are taken care of by the fact that we get uh, a, a bigger return based on this leverage. Okay. Now, the type of options that we use, we have call options and put options. Specifically, call options are used when we are in a bullish trend and we believe that the uh, price will continue to rise, what we do is we buy a directional Delta 70 call. Okay, don't worry about the Delta 70. That's just the, that helps us identify the strike price we want to purchase. But what's important is that we buy a call. Okay? With put options, basically when we are in a bearish trend and we be believe that price will continue to fall, we can go ahead and buy a directional Delta 70 put. So it is pretty straightforward. If we are bearish, we buy a put. If we are bullish, we buy a call. In both cases, we buy. Okay? All right. So that explains the S&P 500 index, 
the, uh, the options we're going to use. The next thing I'd like to talk about is go ahead and outline the trend following strategy we're going to use to trade these spider options. Now, it is a little detailed. Let me walk you through it and then let me demonstrate it on the chart and it will make more sense. But if you just bear with me, let's get through the strategy first and then I'll show you the illustration. Basically what we're going to do, the first thing is identify the trend of the SPY on a two to three minute chart. I usually use a three minute chart, two minute chart also works. Um, the one thing that we can't do is use a tick chart um, because the, the spiders it it's kind of it's kind of weird, but um, I can't pull up a, a tick chart on the spiders. But I can use a, a two to three minute uh, chart, and again, usually I use a three minute chart. If uh, the next step is MQ regression is green, then the trend is bullish. Then it's okay for me to go ahead and go long and buy calls, and then I will look for a moderately undervalued entry point. I'll explain that in a little bit. Just remember, you want to buy at value, so you look for an undervalued entry point. Now, if FQ regression is red, then the trend is bearish. It's okay to go short and buy puts. In this case, I will look for a moderately overvalued entry. Okay, again, buying at value, I want to buy an overvalued entry. Okay, just remember that. We'll walk through it and I'll demonstrate. Again, we want to enter at value and, and then watch for prices to move back towards the trend. Probably saying, Dave, you're confusing me. And it's okay because just one more page, we'll walk through it and then I'll demonstrate it, okay? Now, once we are in a position, we hold that position as long as the trend persists. Now, that's just a generalization, but. When we are in a trend following strategy, if we get in at a good value in the direction of the trend, we want to hold that position as long as the trend persists. Okay. Now, in order to exit the strategy, there's like three things we can basically do. I'll, I'll just demonstrate it for you. But what we can do is once we get price separation from our entry point, once we become profitable and prices are moving our direction, we want we can go ahead and move our stop loss to break even. And we can also also take partial profits. Um, another thing we can do once once things are moving in our direction, we can exit the trade at the opposite value level. That's another exit strategy. Another thing we can do once we get into position, we can hold it until MQ regression changes color. So if we are long because the uh, uh, MQ regression is green, we can hold it until it changes to red. Or if we're short because MQ regression is red, we can hold it until it changes back to green. Just the opposite color. I'll demonstrate it. But those are basically two, three types of exit strategies. Okay? This one's not a true exit strategy. It's just a way to manage the trade. But this one here, is one exit strategy and here's another exit strategy. I'll show you both. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? Maybe a little bit confusing, but uh, it doesn't seem like anybody's got any additional questions right now. Okay. Maybe I, I did a really good job in explaining, but in this particular case, what I'm going to do is now show you. Okay. The first thing we do, identify, okay, this is uh, spiders, three minute chart. Okay, first step, identify the trend. MQ regression running right through here. What color is this? This is red, so we are bearish. It is okay to go short. Now what we do is look for moderately overvalued levels. Moderately overvalued levels are these upper yellow bar segments. Oops, sorry. It's hard to write with a mouse. This moderately overvalued levels, okay? here here okay now what you can do is get in directly to a position in this case because we are going short we are buying a put okay 
buy a put here at moderately overvalued levels. Okay, that is one sh entry strategy. Another, uh, in here, here you buy a put, here you buy a put, here you can buy a put, okay? Those, any, any of these yellow bar segments, you can do that. Now, that is one strategy, okay? Now, another thing that you can do, and um, you can see prices are coming down, they hit these moderately undervalued levels here, and then they bounce back up. This is the moderately overvalued level that you're looking for right here. Basically, what you can do, you can wait and not buy at moderately overvalued levels, but you can wait until you make sure that the prices will continue with the trend. So you can wait till prices start to go back in the direction of a trend. And the way you do that is you bisect this moderately undervalued level and this moderately overvalued level to right about here where it's the middle right here this price right in here that's when you can go ahead and buy a put right there do the same thing see that you understand this is the low this is the high wait for it to come back you can buy right in this level here okay does that make sense we'll do it the next one prices come down here's the here's the lower yellow bar segment here's the upper yellow bar segment divide this price in half here between here and here this is where you can go ahead and buy and uh, buy a put here that way it's a little bit more conservative you're waiting for verification that the prices are moving back in the direction of the trend same thing here here to here half the price is right about here okay and then that's where you can continue to buy okay those are two possible entry levels now, once you're in a position, we're going to start looking for exit points. What you can do if you buy, let's just say, in my example, I buy at moderately overvalued levels right here. Okay, as prices pull away and move in the direction we want them to, I can go ahead and move to break even. And definitely do that. That preserves your risk. It, it, it cuts your risk to nothing. Because if you, it moves away here and then you move your stop loss to your entry level, then if prices zoom up and go against you, you don't lose anything. Okay, That's what you want to do as, a, as an active trader. Your first thought is to decrease or nullify your risk. Once you have no risk, then you can benefit from potential rewards, whatever they may be. You can take an almost unlimited number of zero risk trades. It doesn't matter. Okay, so at this point you can move to break even and possibly even take some partial profits. You can, if you have two contracts here, sell when prices move down, you can go ahead and uh, take half profits and move your risk, the, the remaining contract to break even. That's another thing you can do. Now another exit strategy you can combine with that. If you see here, we get short at moderately overvalued levels, this yellow bar segment. As prices go down, we can look for the first undervalued, moderately undervalued levels. See, you, you buy a put at the yellow, sell a put at the yellow. Buy a put at the yellow, sell a put at the yellow. It gives you a value range target, okay, a value target to sell at here to here. Same thing. Buy a put here at yellow. Sell a put over here at yellow. Same thing here. Buy a put at yellow. Sell a put here at yellow. Now Dave, what about calls? What is the trend? What is the trend? The trend is down. MQ regression is red. We are bearish. Okay, that's why we don't buy a call because you don't want to be on the wrong side of the trend. You want to make sure that you are going with the trend and by combining that with value, you're, you're getting in at a great price. It's like it's on sale, getting a good price and knowing where we can sell it at the opposite value level. That's really good. Okay, yeah. This is like a swing trade. Now, this is a three-minute chart, so this is intraday. Uh, I was going to tell you later, but basically, you could do this on a 
15 minute chart longer. I'll show you an example. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Yes, it, it can be a, a day trade, just like I'm showing you here. Or I'll show you another example. It kind of turns into a swing trade. But I want to expand upon this a little bit. Now, so you can see how I do it as a value range type trade. Buy it, buy it at yellow, sell at yellow. Just the opposite side. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something neat. We can do that. Or the third option, you see the trend is fairly persistent. It's going down. We can go short. We can buy puts. Buy a put there. Buy a put there. Buy a put there. Buy a put here. See MQ regression? It goes from red to green right here. Guess what we do here? We sell one, two, three puts. Four, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four puts. Okay? We sell them here when the trend changes. Right? So that's a pretty nice trade if you buy a a put here, buy a put here, buy a put here, buy a put here. You're pyramiding in a positive way because you're adding more positions. You're compounding on gains that are already locked in. Because if you sell down here, these options that you bought here, these put options will be worth a lot when you sell them here. And then these will be worth more. These will be worth a lot. These these didn't have didn't travel as far, but they're they're still profitable. Okay, so you sell them there. That's another strategy you can use. Okay, it's positive pyramiding. Anytime we get a moderately overvalued level, we add another contract. Okay, so those are two things we can do sell at value, buy at value, sell at value, or just buy one, buy one, buy one, buy one, sell all four. Now, if you understand those two type strategies, let me show you something really cool. Let's combine those two. Like, what are you talking about, Dave? All right, let's just say we turn on our computer. This is the, actually the open of the day right here, this dotted line. Right here. What do we do here? Trend is red. We can go short. Okay. We're going to buy puts uh, just so I don't have to write, uh, keep writing. So buying puts. Guess what we do here? Buy two. What? Buy two contracts. See down here, the first yellow bar segment, we're going to sell one contract. Up here, buy one contract. Here, sell one contract. Here, buy one contract. Here, sell one contract. Here, buy one contract. Here, yeah, do it right here. Sell one contract. What happens down here? We change to the opposite side, sell one contract. Okay, that basically combined the two processes. I mean, you can do it. I mean, you can buy, buy, you could, you could even, uh, that's a conservative way to do it. Instead of buying two here and buying one here, you could buy two, buy two, buy two, sell one, sell one, sell one, sell one. By the time you get down here, you'll sell four. That's another way to do it. That way you're taking small profits along the way, plus then you have this big cascade thing. If it was just like I had written it here, and then you just sold one here, basically this one would be basically what you, what you bought up here. So you have from this distance down to here. That way you can put money in your pocket. If this trend rapidly turns around against you, you will have pocketed profits along the way. That's another way you can do it. Okay. Let's see. How far away from the MQ trend line will represent an extreme deviation from the mean? All oh, those red arrows, John, I, I put those on, uh, on um, TradeStation when I was taking the screenshots. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not, that's just me. How far will the MQ trend line represent extreme deviation from the mean? Oh, you mean the MQ regression? 
MQ regression does not actually represent the trend line or a moving average like you traditionally think. You see how, how, how it's like really far from this here? It's not the case. It, it's not, a, it's not a, like an um, exponential moving average. Basically, it happens to be in the same vicinity as the, as the, um, the prices. The only thing that matters with MQ regression is the color. And let me show you now. Do you see how when MQ regression goes from red to green, what's the, what is the slope of this line? Go back to uh, pre-algebra. The slope of this line is negative. In order to go from a negative slope to a positive slope, it actually has to transition to zero and then change direction. When you see the, the slope of this line, of the line here, MQ regression, it's about 45 degrees. Here it's about 30. Here it goes to zero, and then here it goes positive, plus 30, plus 45. Okay, this gives you a little bit of indication that the trend may change. So in order for the trend to go from bearish to bullish, it has to transition through a zero slope and then change direction. That gives you a little bit of indication as to the change in trend. It always does that. It either goes from red to green or green to red, or red, red to green or green to red. Okay, green to red. Okay, it'll change right there. Okay. We'll keep going. Um, I think more illustration is better. So let's continue going. I think I've gotten everybody's question answered so far. Now, this is a good example. Someone was asking me, what about swing trades? Mike, you, you mentioned this. Um, this is a bullish trend. Again, we'll look here. We'll start at this point here. MQ regression is green. So we are, we are bullish and we have OK to go long. We can buy calls. Now we're going to use the simpler strategy in this particular case. We're just going to buy calls and sell it when we transition back to red. So here, this is where it changes. Okay. So we look for a moderately undervalued level right here. We can go ahead and buy a call here. Okay. Buy a call. Prices move up. They come back down. Barely get into moderately undervalued level here. Buy a call. Prices go up. They come back down, prices hit here, moderately undervalued level. So we, we bought another one. So we're one, two, three. Now we come up to the four o'clock hour because the spiders trade during normal market hours, 9.30 to four, and we transition to the next day. Now, some people can go ahead and close out their position at the end of the day if they don't want to hold it overnight, or they can continue to hold it. So you see MQ regression, do you see the slope? Okay, the next day, this is what the trend, this is the day line here. Next day, we open up strongly to the upside. We pull back, hit moderately undervalued levels right here, buy another call. Okay, because trend, has a trend changed? No, it hasn't. Now, because this was so long, I had to divide it into two different screens, but you see this right here that I'm showing you on that side of the day line? There it is, right here. So we already had three from yesterday. This is number four. Prices go up. They go sideways. Get moderately undervalued. Bought another one here, here, and here. Now, as prices come up, we continue to go. Now, trends, unfortunately, do not continue forever. So you always have to be aware where they may end. Now, it's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're talking about. But if you see this, uh, the slope of MQ regression start to flatline, start to roll over basically, when prices start to go sideways, you start looking for an exit point. So in this particular case, we'll just follow the, the procedure as I outlined. Once MQ regression goes from green to red, we go ahead and sell five. Okay? So we're, again... We collected one, two, three here the previous day. The next day, we collect two more, four and five. When we go MQ regression from green to red, we sell five right there. And you can see that um, all except maybe these, uh, the rest are very, very uh, profitable. Okay? And again, this is a two-day trade. 
Uh, again, you can hold it or you can sell at the close, whichever one you want to do. Okay, because in this case, if you sold at the close and then you come back the next day, you see the trend is still green. The prices come back down to moderately undervalued. You could go ahead in here and, and buy again. Okay, you just don't get to uh, have those other three continue up. But again, that's one way to do it. Now, I'm going to show you in a little bit uh, how to watch MQ Momentum to see if, um, give you some clues about this, this rolling over. If big price moves after trading rooms close, how do you help ma members manage swing positions in the situation? Mike, that's a really good question. Um, basically, Mike is saying, how do you manage big moves in favor or against you when the, uh, oh, after the trading room is closed? Oh, I, I see. Uh, usually, we, we do it through some uh, through our signal feed. Uh, that's another uh, thing that, that um, people use to manage their positions. Um, uh, but basically when I go through it and we have open positions, usually they're swing positions, sometimes, they, uh, sometimes they're uh, spread positions, and I, I basically let them know looking ahead what to look out for. Um, it's up to them to manage their positions if they take positions that are similar to what I'm doing, but I let them know, I mean, as an example, they, they see you know, we've seen stuff like this before so they can help, you know, they do it on their own. Okay. Uh, at this point, not not right now, Mike. So, again, this is how you you could trade the SPY using options um, across two different days. All right. Now, this right here, I'm going to show you the this this same trend following technique. <laughs> I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, information here with uh, MQ momentum. Okay. Again, we're just buying it. Okay, the the trend is green, so it's bullish. We have we're okay to go long, so we can okay to buy calls. We are looking for the lower yellow bar segment, the the moderately undervalued level. Right here is good, so we buy a call. Here, we buy a call. Prices move up. They pull back. It's okay to buy a call in either one, two, three of these bars. Now, as you can see, when if people in my options live trading room know I use MQ Momentum a lot, you see the, the indicator line here. It starts down here, probably around minus 20, and it just goes up, and it goes up, it goes up. See how it's kind of paralleling the MQ regression line? We watch that. Now at this point here, here, and that probably is about right in this level right here. You see how we reach those new highs? You see how the indicator line slope starts to go down and the histograms become red and persistent? Well, when you see this, then you're, you're seeing that this trend is... Uh, the upside bullishness of this move is fading. So when we come back down, you can buy another call here, and then we get into one moderately overvalued level here. Do you see how there's no green red bar segments, and no green red bar, I'm sorry, no green histogram bars here. See that? It doesn't even get into the green. That's showing me this is very weak. You see the indicator line slope is almost flat it would be probably prudent to try to sell one or most of these positions, move up to break even, um, move up, move, build in, um, uh, take some profits basically right in this area. Because when you see no more upside momentum, as indicated by MQ Momentum, the indicator line is going down, this, this train, this trip is ending soon. So you also want to understand that momentum factors into this trend also. A trend persists primarily because the momentum is carrying it. If you lose the upside momentum, you will so, uh, very quickly lose the upside trend. Okay? And then right here is where you can get out. But I wanted to show you and demonstrate that and show you what MQ momentum looks like when we do get that turn. Because we don't trade 
we don't trade in a vacuum. But again, we always watch MQ momentum. But I wanted to bring that into the equation here. All right, let me just see here. On a choppy day when MQ regression changes direction often, how do we put on a trade accurately? Uh, Bankasami, usually we don't. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, the, the question was is when it's going from green to red to green to red, and usually this indicator line is just very flat, just like this, you can't trend follow that. You just can't because we're going from red to green to red to green to red to green. There is no trend. It's sideways. It's choppy. Okay, you see this segment right here? From here, this segment right here, to right here. Just take that, repeat it five times. You'll see it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's not a trending environment. So you can't trend trade that very well. You'll get chopped up. Okay. When you use open, high, low, close, and circuits, which, which have value of analysis? Uh, John, I'm not 100% sure of your question. Um, I, I don't usually use candlesticks on trend following trades or even divergences as a matter of fact, but I can still see the value orientation, the value, the value levels based on value bars. That's what I use. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. But, but that, that I'll go into that some more. Let me go ahead and do the next two, um, two charts, and then we'll see if we have any more questions. Uh, spiders, three-minute chart. I kind of picked this out at random. I mean, yes, I, I didn't get it where it was completely red, green, red, green, red, green, bouncing all over the place because I wouldn't trade that. Um, but in this case, let's just go through it. And this is, we'll just walk through the trend following strategy and just implement it. Okay, MQ regression is red, so we're okay to go short. We're looking at moderately overvalued levels. So right here, and then we could sell it here. We can watch this come up and watch MQ momentum. Go short here, sell here, or even here. Either one, significant undervalued levels are good levels to sell at. Okay, prices come up here again, moderately overvalued. Sell here, buy here. Now, with the stop loss being up above here, you see how prices never come back down. We get stopped out here, and then soon enough, these these prices continue up and it eventually switches over to green. One little trick, if you're watching CMQ momentum, I'm sorry, MQ regression is going down, watch MQ momentum. MQ momentum line is so far down here, it starts to angle up, there's a positive slope. You see how the histograms are nice and big and green? There's a lot of bullishness to this move. I know the trend is still down, but once you see this kind of stuff here in MQ momentum, um, the trend's going to change. Our prices are definitely going to move against you. So you can try to short this. Keep trying to short this. You're going to you're going to be going against momentum, and you're not going to win that fight. So just as a heads up. But but that's basically the trend following strategy, and you can see down here what you're kind of looking for when you're thinking about not getting it. Okay. And the next, John, I see your question. Just give me one second. I want to go through this next one, and then I'll try to answer some more questions. Uh, right here, day opens. MQ trend is red. You can try to get in short here, but we're quickly um, taken out right there, and we can go long. So you're looking for these moderately undervalued levels. I know there's some chop here. You can stay in it. You can see MQ Momentum's indicator line is positive. So if I'm getting long here and I start seeing these prices, I know MQ Trend's going to be stronger to the upside, especially when I see building MQ Momentum, bullish momentum here. 
So we can buy calls here, sell calls here, buy calls here, sell calls here. Look, buy calls here, sell calls here, buy calls here, uh, sell calls here. Okay, just keep following it. Buy calls here, sell calls here. It's, it's when we do it in our trading room, we watch MQ momentum especially when you get to this level. Now, right here, when you see the indicator line is this high, it's it's very hard to say that, oh yeah, this is going to continue higher because you're kind of stretching the rubber band here and we're getting near an extreme. So there's a higher probability of these prices are going to either go sideways or go down. And that's kind of what they do here. Okay, so it's a question of whether or not we get into these two particular trades right here and here. It still does have some uh, bouncing around, so we can pull out some more profits, but this is the easier money here. Okay. Yes, John, you, you say, can you see overbought and oversold with candlesticks? Um, what you mean, the value levels? you can't see them on the candlesticks themselves the way we do it we actually have just the traditional open high low I'm sorry the traditional candlesticks with the the red and the green and we combine that with value charts value charts will tell us um, where they are in the value spectrum which which five merit five primary price zones use both of those it won't be imprinted right on the candlestick but you'll see it because usually we have it laid out. We have the candlesticks up here, and right below it we have the value charts. That way you can see both at the same time. Uh, you can use value bands. Yes, you can. You can do that. That way, sometimes you can see how much further um, a stock has to go before it hits the next valuation level. I've done that in the past. <clears throat> the only problem is sometimes I can't show you here because this is a PDF, uh, a PowerPoint. <coughs> Excuse me. The one thing, um, it clutters up my view. That's the only reason why I don't normally have value bands on the, on the chart themselves. Um, usually if you trade with value bars enough, you get to get a feeling of like you see the height of this yellow bar well that's kind of consistent so you know if the the yellow bar is this long already here that you know that the red segment is just above it okay plus also uh, another thing Naga is that we trade with a lot of um, trend lines and support and resistance levels if we had value bars on their value bands on there also that would really complicate our view and it would be a little um, really congested and we wouldn't really be able to see that um, I really think the best balance is value bars okay all right so now that you've seen some of the basic trend following strategy we use on these spiders um, and see the rational behind rationale behind the trades let me just go ahead and summarize the important points for you to take away tonight um, I kept you guys uh, 55 minutes here so I want to make sure we're clear and, and you can see this summary trending markets provide great opportunities to profit from large and persistent market moves that's the kind of important thing they're large and persistent market moves some some of the time they trend some of the time they chop two different things so if you can see and identify a, and, and identify a move early in the move then you can take advantage of trending markets now use the filter of MQ regression to keep you on the trading on the right side of a trending market if MQ regression is green go long if MQ regression is red go short okay Use value bars to help you time good value-based entries and exit points. This helps you reduce your risk and maximizes profits. Okay? Use the value. Get in at a good buy. Okay? Um, if you're going to go short, buy at moderately overvalued. If you're going to go long, buy at moderately undervalued. 
that reduces your risk because remember they're only in those yellow uh, extreme valuation zones roughly 16 percent of the time and and roughly if it's 16 percent of the time uh, about 82 percent of the time it's in the other direction so you're more likely a higher probability to move back into the green so that helps you reduce your risk and maximize uh, profits okay and then really important very important because this is my thing use options to maximize leverage and minimize risk I, ca I can't I tell you I, I was very fond of trading options before I started my options live trading room honestly I can't think of trading now without options it's just like you learn how to use a tool and you with the leverage you can use with options it's amazing so I just wanted to, to bring those four points to you guys make sure you take take those those are the four most important points for you guys to take away from tonight that you spent this past hour with me okay now does anybody have any um, any additional questions Mike you're asking do I use MQ trend in this trade well you can you can also for those of you that use MQ trend you can add it to this screen and if MQ trend is if MQ regression is green MQ trend is green then hey you get the green light it's actually an additional filter it, it will uh, I don't know how I put it keep you even more on the right side of the trade but it's up to you MQ regression does a good job of in and of itself I didn't want to overcomplicate the strategy by having two trend following indicators but yeah in the past we've used that too what other indexes do I trade with the options? Um, uh, QQQs for the uh, NASDAQ 100 and the diamonds are for you know the Dow, Dow 30. Those are the other, the other two I know that we use in our options live trading room. Um, I mean this doesn't have to be with indexes to be honest you just use this with a stock just as fine I was trying to go short I was trying to uh, divergence trade uh, Apple today when I should have been trend trading Apple to be honest and this this would have worked really well for us any more questions all right I think I got everybody's questions along the way if anybody has any additional questions feel free to pop it back up there um, the one other thing I, I really want to as a lot of people's names uh, are familiar to me from some from my options trading room some I've seen before in in other webinars but I just wanted to quick um, take a minute to introduce you to my options live trading room if you haven't uh, experienced it before uh, this is where we focus on trading setups with options on stocks now the stocks that we normally follow um, are, include uh, Apple Google Amazon we've been trading Tesla recently Goldman Sachs, MasterCard, Visa, LinkedIn, JP Morgan, Netflix, CRM, GMCR, all those, those other, they, we, we trade about 25 to 30 that we follow. Um, we do a lot of, we do some intraday trading primarily with Apple, Google, and Amazon. Um, a lot of good scalping opportunities there. We also do some, some, every once in a while swing trading and we utilize directional puts and calls just basically like what I showed you and then midweek to the end of the week we do uh, credit call um, uh, uh, credit spreads uh, either put pull, I'm sorry call credit spreads or put credit spreads we utilize we have a very unique strategy that we use we use momentum indicators as well as um, um, support and resistance and trend lines to, to come up with some very high quality high probability spreads um, in the past couple of weeks we've been averaging anywhere from two to five percent return every every week on the money that we commit to spreads it's really cool so we make money we make money every we try to make money every day with intraday trades and then the spreads at the end it's kind of like our income um, and we, we use these spreads to take advantage of time decay on expiring weekly options that's normally what we trade our trading room hours 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. okay it runs uh, 149 a month 
Now, if the opportunities of trading options on stocks sounds exciting and potentially profitable to you, and you'd like to experience more yourself, you're welcome to send me an email at davidmicroquant.com, and I can send you a free pass to the uh, options live trading room. If you have any questions on, on what we've gone over tonight or um, the trading room, feel free to go ahead and contact me. If you can't make it, you know, this week may not be the optimum week to be in the options live trading because the 4th of July and everything. Uh, feel free to let me know uh, next week would, uh, or the week after, whatever's good for your schedule. We'll be happy to host you and uh, have you in our room. Okay, well, uh, yeah, Mike, uh, open house on Wednesdays. Wednesdays is probably the best day to attend because we kind of do everything. Uh, intraday, we're getting into spreads, we're managing spreads. If a swing trade comes along, we could still take it. So Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are good. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm sorry, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are probably the best days. Sure, sure. All right, well, I don't see any more questions. Yeah, just send me an email, Mike. Anybody else, too. If you'd like to attend, just send me an email, and I'll set you up. I'll take care of you. And if you have any questions about the, uh, just send, send those to me too. Okay. Well, thank you again for spending time with us in this webinar session. I hope you found it both exciting and informative. Um, any direct questions can be sent to me at davidmicroquant.com, or you can send information, uh, questions to our support at microquant.com address. Again, uh, my name is Dave Aquino. Uh, have a good rest of your evening, and, and thank you for, for trading with us. Have a great time. Good night.